Today I have my Zion Crane version 2 out because I wanted to show you guys how I personally balance this thing. But before we get to the balancing, we need to take a look at a couple of the components of this device. When we look at the Zion Crane version 2 and attempt to balance this thing, there are four different parts that we must consider. The base plate, the tilt axis, the roll axis, and of course the pan axis. These are the four different components that you must adjust and able to balance this device. I'd like to also note that in able to make balancing of this device easier, I am using an Arca Swiss quick release plate along with a set of mini tabletop tripod legs for this device. If you're interested in either of these products, links will be down in the description below. So before we get started, I'm just going to throw this thing completely out of balance so we can get a fresh start with this device. Now, let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is to obviously mount your camera onto the gimbal. Like I said, I'm using an Arca Swiss quick release plate, just makes life a lot easier. And according to the manual, you want your camera as close to the tilt axis as possible. So I usually just try to push it right up against it without it actually rubbing against the gimbal arm. As you can see, depending on how your arms are set up, this thing would be completely out of whack. Mine is tilting towards the left and it's a little bit front back heavy in this situation. So I personally like to deal with the roll axis first. The roll axis is the one dictated by this horizontal arm because I personally feel that once this is balanced, it's a lot easier to work with this without it having to this to just bounce back and forth. So to do this, we're just going to release this screw, loosen it up and move this arm left to right. If your camera is turning left, camera right, so it's turning left right now, right? You want to pull this arm to the right. It's essentially, this is how you work with this entire device. It's just going opposite of where your camera is moving. So this is tilting to my left, so I'm going to pull it to the right. And as you can see, the more I move, let's move it completely to the right, it's too much to the right now, right? So let's move it back to the left. A little bit more, a little bit more, until we essentially just get it as close to balance as possible. Something like that. It's visually balanced, but this doesn't really matter. I generally have all these screws loose so that I can go back and forth and just move them little by little, one axis after another. From here, we move on to balancing the tilt axis, which is based on this little vertical arm right here. And of course, once again, we just loosen this arm, move it up and down. and this is really based on how your camera is moving. As you can see, it's a little bit back heavy. Back heavy meaning it's falling backwards. Front heavy, falling forward. And when you're adjusting this axis, it really corresponds with the base plate. These two move hand in hand. So I'll just show you once I try to balance this thing. So it's moving, it's just falling backwards. So I'm just gonna drop it down. Let's see, once you drop it all the way down, and it's still tilting backwards too much. That tells me that the base plate is too far back. So let's see if we move the base plate forward, now it's falling forward, right? So let's move the base plate to a place where it's about even. Lock that down. Oh. Lock it down. And now we can work on the pan bar again. So we're just gonna move it up, let's just throw it way off, move it all the way up, and it's falling forward. That means we need to move it back down. And we just go back and forth with these, the, the base plate and the pan arm until we get a balance. Still falling forward. And now see, this is what I mean. This is why I like to leave this loose. Well, I guess it's because I leave it loose that when you're adjusting the, the other two axes, it kind of gets it thrown off, but I personally feel like it's easier to work this way without tightening, it, tightening everything down. So now this is staying in place and we have everything perfectly balanced. Let's say that for now. Ideally, what you want is to be able to move the camera in any location and it stays there. As you can see, if I move it down, it falls forward. If I move it back, it falls backward. Like I said, you want it to be able to stick there. And to do this, we just keep going back and forth and adjusting the arm and the base plate. So, like I was saying earlier, we're just going to move this down. 
Oh, look, not too hard. That was a lot easier than I was expecting it to be. So now the camera, like I was saying, it kind of stays in every position that I put it in, no matter forward or back. And this is perfectly balanced in terms of the pan and the base plate. Once we have that balance, we're just gonna lock everything down, making sure it stays in place and double checking this roll axis again. It still looks pretty good. Maybe lean a little bit to the right, so just push it to the left. The name of the game is to just get it as close as possible because you're doing this visually. You're not gonna be able to do it perfectly unless you have a level. And if you want it to get it even a little bit closer, if your camera has a digital balance indicator, just turn it on, look at the back screen of your camera and work off of that. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm just gonna lock this down because it is as close as I can visually get. Now, if you remember, I said that there was four different things that we must adjust in order to get this thing balanced. We did the pan, the base plate, and the roll bar. The last thing to do is the tilt. To balance the pan axis, we must actually pick the gimbal up. And as you can see, once I do that, this arm swings up. And this is where adjusting of this knob and this arm comes into play. You must adjust it so that this arm actually sits parallel to the ground, ideally about right here. So right now, we're just gonna do that. I'm just gonna loosen this up and let's see what happens. If I pull it all the way back, and let go, it starts falling down, maybe a little bit too much. If I push it all the way forward as it was earlier, it swings up. So we know that we have to go back. And I'm not too worried about everything that's going on right here because we're just focusing on this arm right now. And that might be a little bit too much. Let's just push it back in. Too much, pull it back. And uh, let's push it in a little. Like I was saying, it's just a lot of guessing and checking. Going back and forth and you know what, I'm happy with it right there. So let's just lock it down and get everything back up. And now our Zero and Crane version two should be perfectly balanced. But as you can see, it's tilting a little bit. So let's just adjust it again. And perfect. Now, one thing that I would like to recommend, I personally have these um, Peak Design strap holders, strap lugs in place on all my cameras. And this isn't exactly the best thing to have on your camera when you're trying to bounce it on a gimbal because these move independently and they will throw your bouncing off. But as you can see, I did manage to bounce it perfectly fine. And all there really is left to do is to just turn it on. and start shooting. And there you have it. That's all it really takes to balance the Zeo and Crane version two. Nothing too difficult, it's just a lot of guessing and checking. Adjusting one axis, moving on to the next, and then check it again to make sure that the ones that you've already gone through isn't off by too much. Just making sure that the whole thing works together as a complete unit. If you're able to do this, the nice thing is that because all one-handed gimbals kind of are based on the same design, they all have very similar adjustments. So if you're able to do it here, you'll probably be able to replicate your results onto another gimbal that you may be able to come across. So just stick with it. Don't get too frustrated. Like I said, just go back and forth, making sure everything works together. And if this video has helped you out, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Share this video, comment down below if you have any more questions. Follow me on all my social media at the Upper Left USA. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.